Hey everybody, here in downtown Toronto. Toronto, visiting downtown. I don't come here too often. I should probably come here more often uh, since I live so close. Anyways, today we're gonna talk about prime lenses versus zooms. Which are better, when should you use what, and what are kind of the pros and cons? Now this is gonna be a two-part series because there's a lot to talk about here. So this one will be focused specifically on primes. And the reason why I'm downtown is because of uh, that guy right there. Uh, He's a bit of a Californian tourist, and uh, it's a little bit embarrassing, but uh, you know, friends, right? So beautiful here. Dude. This is beautiful. You do realize this is Canada, right? Oh yeah, but you know, I mean, I guess it's a little bit chilly. Yeah, you're pretty no, I'm, this is, I'm, this is, I'm they, comfortable. They think he's frozen. I'm very comfortable. Are you comfortable. frozen? No, this is great. I mean, I've been to San Francisco before, yeah. and uh, I guess this is a little bit colder, but I feel fantastic. Uh, Where are we going? Hey, I, don't, I don't know how to say this, man, but it's like, it's a little bit embarrassing. What, are you, what like, are you talking about? I'm just representing California here in Toronto. Woo! All right, jokes aside, jokes aside, he just he just wanted to show off his legs here in Canada. Uh, if you guys don't know, this is Gene, uh, hey, aka. Eating my thighs. <laughs> Zoom in. Are you getting my thighs? Oh yeah. His channel is called Potato Jet, and if you're not subscribed to him, you should uh, definitely definitely go subscribe right now. Right? How does it go? Dislike and unsubscribe? Was that your thing? Or, <laughs> or don't do that. Please subscribe and stuff. And if you want to see more of these. <laughs> These thighs, you know. A uh, general rule of thumb is a good day has helicopters in it. That's just, you know, general rule. Dude, who are you? What do you do? How do you have your own helicopter? Uh, Chris Nicholas, um, one half of the channel, Becky and Chris. Uh, Maddie's gonna link it up here. Oh, of course. Um, what do I do? I am an interventional radiologist, but I'm also a, a helicopter pilot. I'm a commercial helicopter license. And I was coming around, so I was coming around the city, so I asked Maddie, it's like, hey, you wanna go for a little uh, fun little ride? And he said, yes. Why do I keep getting myself into these situations where I'm like, ah, should I be scared or? Bro, on a, on a scale of one to swimming with sharks, this is probably <laughs> about a nine on the dangerous <laughs> scale. <laughs> Dang it. Oh my gosh, you have a one wheel inside <laughs> your is, helicopter. This is the ultimate adventure machine, I'm telling you. You just set it down somewhere and go explore on the one wheel. You got land, air and ground covered. You, you don't need anything else. I'm gonna be the first person in the history of mankind to ride a one wheel at Billy Bishop Airport on Toronto Island. <laughs> no, I am, <laughs> that was the best ever. <laughs> Correction, the first person to fail at riding a one wheel. Okay, take helicopter. two. Ground has been broken, <laughs> records have been set, let's go. Man, I thought I lived an exciting life, but this guy flies around in a helicopter and then he just busts out his one wheel and he just cruises around airports. And my life's lame. All right, let's do this, boys. Let's do it. Well, that was crazy. Uh, yeah, that was that was wild. I've done some helicopter rides, but that one was really cool, especially because it was around Toronto. Now, that wasn't a very good example because I filmed all of that on this 16 to 35 zoom lens um, because it's just a lot easier and faster when you're in a small helicopter. You can't really be switching lenses, so prime lenses aren't so good for that. Uh, but we will get to why prime lenses are great. Don't worry.
Okay, real talk. It's been like over a week since I filmed that last part with Gene. It was great hanging out. Uh, I got sick, real sick, lost my voice, all that stuff. Just been super tired, and so I haven't gotten around to finishing this video. But don't worry, we're gonna talk about why primes are so good right now. This guy, this guy, and this one. <laughs> a little off. All right, so why are primes so great? Why wouldn't you, instead of buying a whole bunch of lenses like this 35 mil, 24 mil, 50 mil, why wouldn't you just buy a 24 to 70 that covers the whole range? Well, there's some important things to consider if you're looking into lenses. Prime lenses, which are just fixed focal length, so you, you can't zoom in on them, they're just that one focal length. That's all it is, that's that one focal length, so this lens you can just focus, but there's no zoom on it. Ah, this is still crooked. And I think that's good now. I'm a bit OCD with this kind of stuff. So yeah, the first reason why you would get a prime lens over something like a zoom lens, oh man, the battery's dying now. Oh, hold on, I'll get a new battery. I got two just in case. And we're back, sorry for all the interruptions. So the first reason why you would get a prime lens is the wider aperture. So they go to a smaller number aperture, which means you're gonna get more shallow depth of field. Um, that's probably one of the best things that I like about prime lenses. You can just get that super nice background blur, that bokeh in the background, um, unlike anything else. A zoom lens can never do the same thing. The fastest zoom lens that there is out there is a 1.8, I, I believe. And that's pretty fast, but these lenses are all 1.4, there's 1.2, and, and it doesn't sound like much of a difference going from something like a f2.8 to a 1.4, but there's actually a massive difference in between the two. So first off, I think it just looks more cinematic having that super nice shallow depth the field, but then along with that comes better low light performance. So you're gonna get more light into the sensor because it's making the lens aperture even wider so more light is getting into the sensor. So it's way better for low light filming at nighttime or when you just don't have very much light. You have way more exposure to work with. You don't just have to crank up the ISO right away. And again, it doesn't sound like that much of a difference going from like an f2.8 zoom lens to a 1.4, but it's actually a lot of light that you're losing when you go to f2.8 versus 1.4. And then one of the things a lot of people talk about is that primes are just sharper. These primes are much sharper than zoom lenses for the most part, but um, I'm not so concerned with that. And I think some of that sharpness is kind of perceived sharpness also. When you're filming at a really wide aperture like f1.4, it makes it look like it's super sharp because only your subject is in focus and everything else is so blurry. So your subject looks like it's like really crispy sharp just in comparison to the background. They are definitely sharper for the most part, but a lot of it is also perceived. Um, but for me, this isn't really that big of a deal. I think um, digital sensors are just already so sharp. Um, lenses are so sharp that if anything, I would want less sharp lenses. I think it just kind of makes it look a little bit too digital, too clinical. It's a little bit too sharp a lot of the time. So uh, that for me is not a big thing at all. And then lastly, prime lenses are a lot cheaper than zoom lenses. For example, this lens that I'm filming with right now, it's the 16 and 35, it's around $2,000, whereas these are about $900, these Sigma uh, art series lenses, f1.4, this one's f2.8. Um, so these are a lot cheaper. You can get two of these for the price of one lens. Zooms are really, really expensive, so it depends on your budget too. Can you even afford a zoom because they are so pricey? Now, gonna get more focal lengths than something like a 16 to 35 or a 24 to 70, but if you can't afford it, then you can't afford it. For me, my favorite prime lenses right now are the 35 mil f1.4, the Sigma, and then the 24 mil f1.4, and I actually just literally bought this, but this is a really nice range. Um, these are my favorites, but a really popular one also is the 50 mil and the 85 mil. I think those are kind of like the four most popular. So if you're looking to get prime lenses, um, I would go for one of those. I'd maybe go for like a 35 mil and then an 85 mil. And with that, you can do a lot. 35 mil is really flexible, really versatile. Um, you can get portraits, you can get a little bit wider shots. And then the 85 is just really nice and crisp for uh, portraits and that kind of stuff. But I don't use the 85 very much um, because 
you know, if, if I was filming myself with an 85, I'd have to be like, I'd have to be over here. It'd be super zoomed in. So um, yeah, I don't use the 85 too much, but um, these two are my favorites right now. And it's interesting, in the beginning of my career, I was like, oh, I'm only gonna use primes. Primes are the best. Primes are gonna be the way to go. And my first one was the 35 mil, and then I think it was the 85 mil actually. Um, but then as my career progressed, I started to buy some zooms. And I started to see that there's a place for zooms also. Primes are great, but zoom lenses are also great. And it really depends on the kind of things that you're filming. So in part two of this little primes versus zooms, uh, we're gonna talk about why zooms are the way to go, why you should get a zoom instead of these little prime lenses. So yeah, if you're interested, uh, stay tuned for part two. haven't you should definitely check out potato jets channel uh gene is his actual name um highly recommend watching his content by far one of my favorite youtubers on youtube so you should go check him out